Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu and his wife Sarah arrived here in the United States a little earlier this afternoon. Uh, but yet, oddly enough, they were not greeted by the president, neither his vice president, Kamala Harris, or Joe Biden. And for that matter, neither was there any of the uh, nominees for president there uh, greeting him which I don't suppose that would be proper in the first place, but it kind of brings me to a place, and this was a message I've been working on for a couple of days now, as to where some people have kind of gotten irritated with me about not being more pro-Israel. Uh, and after all, there are some very biblical verses that are cited why I should not be in support of Israel in the first place. And it's not an unusual thing for them to be able to kill women and children, driving out the inhabitants of the land. After all, it was Netanyahu that cites the very passage about Amalek from Samuel, 15th chapter. We're going to talk about that here in just a moment. But I want to share with you what actually sp uh, spurred this entire conversation in the first place uh, was the fact that... Uh, I was in uh, uh, Orlando, as some of you realize, after I posted the video there with David Schmidt and Steve uh, uh, Steve Merritt. Uh, and while I was there, we were having a dinner, and I was sitting with uh, four of our partners in this uh, uh, endeavor. It was uh, Sister Darnell, uh, Sister Kim, and Brother Richard. And the, the subject actually came up. Kim had mentioned that, and, um, and she asked me the question about Israel and, you know, and, and also how that the historic side of Israel is that God would permit them to take the lives of children, women, etc., uh, especially when this was the enemy of Israel. And without even thinking there was a response that come right out of me. And it really caused me to go dig because I was kind of surprised at my response. I don't think it was led of myself. I believe it was the Holy Spirit leading me. But I actually stated, if that be the case, then you negate the blood of Jesus Christ for those people. And I think it surprised the sister that asked me as well and uh, so I went back and I did a little research because of what I said to her. And uh, because, like I said, it surprised me a bit as well. If you recall here, well, let me first, before I play Samuel, this is Prime Minister Netanyahu at the beginning of the conflict when they were going to war with Gaza. And watch what he says. I'll give you subtitles. You must remember what Amalek has done to you, says our Holy Bible. And we do remember and we are fighting our brave troops and combatants who are now in Gaza or around Gaza and in all other regions in Israel are joining this chain of Jewish heroes, a chain that has started 3,000 years ago from Joshua ben Nun until the heroes of 1948, the Six-Day War, the 73 October War, and all other wars in this country are hero troops they have one supreme main goal to completely defeat the murderous enemy and to guarantee our existence in this country. We've always said, never again, never again is now. All right, there you have the prime minister actually referring to 1 Samuel 15. And if we look at that, uh, he says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he set himself against him in the way when he came up out of Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek utterly and destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox, sheep, camel, and ass. There was nothing being spared, not a woman, not a child, not anything. And this is what Netanyahu is saying in his justification 
uh, as he went on to slaughter now the count at 16,550 children killed in Gaza in the last 266 days. This was as of the date of the post by uh, Sarah there, and I do not recall that date. It's not been too long ago when she posted this. Um, and then we have that. And then again, you have an Ezekiel. Another very interesting passage. The only difference is this time Ezekiel is commanding that they go forth and they mark all those that sigh and cry for the abominations that are done in the city. But then he says, slay utterly the old man, the young man, the maiden, the little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark. Begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the elders that, that were before the house. As I mentioned in a video not too long ago, now you know what the mark of the beast is. This is exactly where I discovered what the mark of the beast really will be. You ought to watch that video. Maybe I'll put the link in the description for you here. But nonetheless, again, it's this seemingly aimless slaughter of women and children that have nothing to do with these crimes that they're being pretty much uh, put to death for. Now, uh, and, and there again, Christians are like, you know, and, and this man right here crying for the death of his children, uh, you know, just all... Uh, distraught over it and he cries out the whole world watches and does nothing as their children are all killed you know and how many of these people just innocent oh they say they're all guilty because they're related to Hamas again like I said to the one sister I said then you negate the blood of Jesus Christ and the actual meaning behind that was You've never given them a chance to come to know Jesus Christ in the first place, so therefore you think you have a right to go out and slaughter them. You think you have a right to stand with Israel to go out and slaughter these people. Let's take a look at what the Word of God says about it. We start in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 1. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered, year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? Because that the worshiper once purged should have no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh in the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, as it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. And when he said, Sacrifice and offering, and burnt offerings, and offering for sin, thou wouldest not, neither hast thou pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Notice Paul's actually challenging the very thought here. He comes to do thy will, O God, but he also says, Sacrifices and offerings, you had no desire in them. But he said, but yet they're being offered according to the law. Seems a little bit almost like a hypocrisy in a way. Then said he, lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first that he may establish the second. By the which will we are, which, which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Also, if you look at Matthew 15, starting with verse 28, Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith, let it be done unto you as you asked. So from that time on, her daughter was healed. 
When Jesus moved uh, on from there, he went in the region across Galilee, a mountain, and he stood there and he saw many people among. Oh, wait, actually, I need to back up just a little bit. Then there came to him a certain Canaanite woman who came from the lands of the east crying out to him, Master, son of David, have mercy on me because my daughter is possessed by demons. Jesus did not answer her a word. So his disciples approached him and said to him, Our master, why do you abandon this woman who is crying out after us? Jesus answered them, they did not send me except to the lost sheep from the house of Israel. Then the woman worshipped him and said, Lord, help me. Jesus said to her, It is not good that a man should take the bread from his children and give it to the dogs. The woman answered, Often the dogs eat the pieces of bread that fall from the table of their master. Well, she has been pretty witty about it. Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done to you as you ask. So from that time on, her daughter was healed. We're going to get even deeper, though. Watch this here. We're in the book of Matthew, uh, the Gospel of Matthew. Um, let's see here. Chapter 5. But I say to you, not to swear in vain in any matter, neither by heaven because it is the throne of God, nor by the earth because it is the footstool of his feet, nor by Jerusalem because it is the city of God, nor by your head, for you are not able to make one hair white or black, but let your words be yes, yes, or no, no. Everything in addition to this is evil. Again, watch now. You have heard, it, you have heard what is said in the Torah, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not repay evil for evil. But he who smites you on the right cheek, provide for him the left. He who wishes to oppose you in the judgment and to rob your shirt, leave, him to, leave to him your garment. He who asks you to go with him a thousand steps, go with him two thousand. To whom I ask from you, give him and from him who wishes to borrow from you, do not hold back. Think about it. You see, there he was, right from the very law of Moses, and he told you to do just the opposite. See, it's not just the blood of Jesus Christ is negated. When you stand with the modern state of Israel to take and murder these people or consent to their deaths, because you believe that this ancient old uh, 15 Samuel of chapter 1 Samuel there, that Israel, because Netanyahu quoted it, has the right to go and slaughter everybody, including every man, woman, and child in there. No, sir, that is totally incorrect. Did you not read what it says in Hebrew? The law, the first covenant, was done away with. Not only was it done away with, the temple was totally removed to prove it had been done away with. And a new covenant, a covenant of mercy, a covenant of long-suffering, a covenant that went, as it says in the scriptures, they would no longer be the ones that say, you are my people, but he would, we would, he would be called by people that were not his people, and they would be his people. Speaking about the Gentiles, how they would come in. You see, it's no longer under the covenant of slaughtering every man, woman, and child as been done in the Old Testament. But now there is mercy. And yet, oddly enough, as it says here in this article right here from uh, the New York Times, Erase Gaza, War Unleashes Incinerary Rhetoric in Israel. Oh, and it sure certainly did. Everything from Netanyahu and the uh, Amalekites to uh, we have here uh, the Defense Minister of Israel. אנחנו מתילים מצור מוחלט על איר אaza. אין חשמל, אין מזון, אין מים, אין דלק. 
הכל סגור, אנחנו נלחמים בחיות אדם ואנחנו נוהגים בהתאם. That's what they did to the Jews during the Holocaust, by the way. Demoralized them as if they were no more than animals. It made it much easier for the Nazis to slaughter them then. And believe me, it wasn't just any German. There were a lot of good Germans that hid the Jewish people and did everything they could to protect them at their own peril. But it was that crazy Gestapo of SS, just like what you have in Ukraine today. And no different than it was in World War II as it is today, Zelensky, Jewish leader running the whole thing, running a bunch of neo-Nazi extremists. And Hitler was surrounded, Jewish by his mother, no doubt, and then surrounded by a Jewish cabinet putting to death more Jews. Hmm. Doesn't that make you think, right? Then you had also the interview, the radio interview, Israeli Heritage Minister Amihai Eliyahu said that dropping a nuclear bomb on Gaza was one of the possibilities. Are you serious? But you know, America, we can't say we're much of any better the United States knew full well the attack was coming on Pearl Harbor and did very little to save their own people. But then they turned around because they wanted to do a little experiment. Just what would a nuclear device do? Then they didn't do one, they did two. Do you think every Japanese person was that type of person that carried out the attack on Pearl Harbor? And yeah, I do have skin in the game on that. Not my own, but it was my grandfather that was there. He had the Japanese bullets come right down through the top of his car, nearly killed him and his wife, my grandmother. A lot of evils go on all over the world. For what reason? Who knows? Uh, you have all kinds of ministers like this one here. Not the guy to the left here, but the guy to the right right there that he's playing. Let me kind of blow this up. Listen to what he says. Okay, that's, that's Genesis 12. You bless the seed of Abraham, you're blessed. You curse them, you're cursed. God puts the whole world on notice. These are my chosen people. I have a plan for them. Yes, they have followed idols. Yes, they have been punished and judged. Yes, they rejected their Messiah. Yes, they are still, this Jews are living and dying and going out of the presence of God forever now. But still, God has a future plan for the Jewish people. And interesting, interesting. That plan is for every human being on the face of the earth, if they'll only receive it, and that is the saving grace of Jesus Christ. No other plan is there. And when he says, if you bless Israel, you'll be blessed. If you curse Israel, you'll be cursed. Let me show you that scripture in Genesis. It does not say that. Um, Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, from thy father's house, into the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you. And make your name great and be you to you a blessing. And I will bless them that bless you and him that curses you will I curse. And in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Wow. Notice all the you's. You got the word the in there. But in Hebrew, here it is right there. 
is the is is that nice chet sofit right there. Okay, you got to see it there. You got it right there. You got it right there. Everywhere you see that, that's a singular you. He was not including all of Abraham's children in that promise. I hate to break it to you, but it's just not there. Now, the seed of Abraham, as we have here, and we are here in Genesis chapter 22. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. See right there, Bezeracha, and again, it's nobody else's seed but his, which literally comes through the woman's seed, this prophesied here in Genesis. To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy pain, thy travail, and in pain you shall bring forth children. And we've been to it before what this really means. And your desire shall be to your husband, and he shall rule over you. Hmm. Trying to get to the right. Oh, sorry. It's in the verse before I meant to bring out. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between thy seed. So the serpent has children. And her seed. Wow. Her seed. Now, don't say nothing about his, but her seed. Hmm. Huya Shafach. Okay, wait a minute. And uh, there it is right there in the blue. If I get the highlighter to quit doing that. Uvein azara. That's feminizing the word seed because it's her seed. And between her seed. That was speaking of the coming of the Messiah, Jesus Christ being the fulfillment thereof. And that all the nations of the earth will be blessed because thou hast hearkened to my voice and that is in thy seed. And of course, again, it's to hear the voice of God, the voice of the Messiah. So it's not a matter, the modern state of Israel, if Israel goes out and kills everybody in Gaza, and you say nothing against it because you're afraid you're going to be cursing Israel in the process like there's some kind of exclusive blessing to the state of Israel is totally incorrect. It's just not there. It does not exist. So, you know, so when we see things like this one here too. God's chosen people always have been God's chosen people. Israel is God's chosen people, always have been God's chosen people, always will be God's chosen people. Isn't that sad? The one thing that makes you chosen is when you accept that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. When you are accepting of him and you are filled with the Holy Spirit, then you are sealed to the day of your redemption. That is the one that's truly blessed. And now you're in Christ. If you're in Christ, you are in the seed. You are in the very one that the promise applies to. We could go a little bit deeper than that. Maybe I will a bit later, but I wanted to just share this with you. If you don't stand for those poor people over there that are being slaughtered, then you have not stood for the blood of Jesus Christ because his blood atoned for them as well. No, you cannot call them Amalekites. And it's no different, even Hamas. Give them the opportunity. There have been a lot of Christians killed in this battle too, and they're treated no different than any other Palestinian. They're murdered right along the same as the rest of them. Makes no difference. They've tried to evangelize their people. But you know, it's kind of hard when all they see is Israel looking down the rifle barrels, being beat up, slaughtered, killed, murdered. Think about it. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live.